Hello everyone, this is Monster and Bloba coming at you with another Kindred Fates video. This time we're going to be um, covering the newest alpha patch. Been quite some time since we've had one of these, so let's get right in. This is alpha patch 2.5. Time to dust off that gamepad. Patch brings some much needed improvements to controller support, the feel of melee combat, and even how smoothly you string the abilities together. We've given the setting page a complete overhaul with new settings, art, improved key bindings, and last but not least, we introduce you to Lock On 2.0. New version of Lock On aims to improve the feel of combat while correcting the shortcomings of a previous incarnation. Try out Combat on Controller, tinker with the setting pages, and find what configuration works best for you. We're looking forward to hear what you think of the new changes. Improved controller support. Camera and character movement speed is now based on how far you push the control sticks in a direction rather than being a constant speed when a stick is moved at all. It greatly improves the feel of gameplay on controller. Button bindings displayed in combat UI are now updated in real time depending on which controller the player is currently using. Support controllers include Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch Pro controller, motion air gamepads, keyboard and mouse. In order for controller support properly, we strongly recommend you do not use third-party programs that enable con use of controllers like the DS4 Windows. Improved default key bindings for controllers. Input from keyboards and controllers are now allowed at the same time. That's interesting. Button bindings are now displayed slightly larger in the combat UI, and party combat UI now displays button bindings. New settings page. Setting page of a complete rework with brand new UI. You may now bind up to three different inputs in a key binding. You new setting when toggled on allows the user to press the same button to fire ability that they press to activate it. This setting disables canceling an ability while aiming. It's very helpful when playing on controller. New setting that when toggled on allows the user to press a button to activate an ability and continue holding the button to aim it and release the button to fire it. This is very helpful when playing on controller. Improve duplicate key binding handling. Uh, lock on 2.0 With this patch we're introducing a new and completely revamped version of the lock on mechanic We took your feedback to heart and after the initial version of lock on was removed I um, have made many improvements to correct the mechanics previous issues We hope you'll give the new version here a chance and let us know what you think of it By default lock on is bound to the middle mouse click or L1 on the controller Tapping the button will enable lock on and cause the camera to track your kin folks cursor to his nearest target. Tapping it again will unlock the camera from the target. The camera's lock will be broken if your view is just obscured for more than three seconds. Once you can see the target again, you may press lock on to lock back on. Some abilities like teleport will automatically break the camera's lock on. This allow you to sneakily warp behind your opponent and catch them off guard or hide behind an object even if they're locked onto you. While the player has no basic range attack Equipped lock on will track the target very closely. We found this significantly improved the feel of melee combat. If the player has a range basic attack equipped, lock on will keep the target in view but will not track it closely. While the player is aiming any non basic attack, the lock on will keep the target in view but not track it closely. Alright, so that's pretty interesting there. New impact VFX has been added for basic melee attacks. Impact VFX are now properly rotated to match the direction of the attack. NPC AI now faces the player more often in combat. Added Avion Beacon to the practice room. The auto land when near ground setting has been temporarily disabled due to a bug. Double tapping the jump button while flying will still cancel flight. And then general balance changes. Kinfolk can now act before an animation is fully completed. The point at which Kinfolk are able to begin a new action during animation depends on the ability being used and the animation to kinfolk using it. Most abilities, however, allow the user to act 80% of the after 80% of the animation is completed. This new action could be using another ability, shielding or dodging. By giving you better control of the character's actions like this, we found it significantly improved the fluidity of combat and overall game feel. Now we have special uh, changes to kinfolk. Slifer. Swipes combo speed increased due to faster animation transitions. Earth uh, Shovelet. Earth swipe combo uh, speed increased for the same reason. Stamina required to jump has been set to zero for all kinfolk. We plan to make further improvements to jumping in the future. Wait. So wait, you can just jump without spending stamina again? I th thought that that was generally a good change. That um, 
if I'm reading this right, that means that you're going to be going back to just spamming, jumping constantly without needing the stamina there. Um, oh well, I mean, I don't think it's going to change that much, but I, I don't really think the change is necessarily needed, but they said they plan on making more improvements in the future. And the more I think about it, it's dodging is more powerful than jumping and shielding is more powerful than jumping so maybe it's probably not going to be that big of an issue mostly everybody did it in the past because we didn't really know how to play as much um yeah it's the stamina didn't play a huge role anyways but moving on to abilities getting changed crescent strike added more wind up to the first strike second and third strike has been um, increased due to the animation transitions Die Bomb has improved collision detection and momentum after collision. Shield. Now the user only becomes invincible once the VFX is displayed. And Hook now does 100 shield damage instead of 30. And now we have a ton of bug fixes. So buckle in for this. Fix the bug that shield caused Kim folks animated to become stuck sometimes. Fix the bug with a reflect that allowed a reflect projectile to still damage the user. Fix the bug that caused the user to move during dash attacks before animation has started. Fix the bug that caused poison and burns to continue triggering while the Kim folk was not swapped in. Fix the bug that allowed Kim folk to swap uh, user to swap Kim folk while snared. Okay, that is a big buff to snares. Fix the bug with scorch that caused projectiles to rotate in strange ways. Fix the bug with iron fist that caused it to rotate in strange ways. Fix the bug that prevented minion projectiles from expiring properly. Wait, what minion projectiles? I'm not sure what that means exactly. Maybe they mean like, you know, how some things carry over into the other round, perhaps. Fix the bug that caused escape draft to expire before the character swap had occurred. Fix the bug that caused thunderclaps animation to not complete properly. Fix the bug that required Kim folk to be damaged twice before waking them up from sleep. Fix the bug that caused Embers out of sleep animation to take abnormally long time transition back to idle. Fix the bug that caused Umala's rare idle animation to play while moving. Fix the bug with Avion that caused them to slowly drift upwards while hovering in place. Fix the bug with Hal and Murder that caused them to become stuck in their animation for a short time after using Hal. Fix the bug that caused frame rate to fall through the floor when the settings menu was displayed. Fix the bug that caused fear to not affect terrestrial kinfolk. Fix the bug that prevented range attacks from being animation cancelled within their intended and uh, intended cancel windows. Fix the bug that allowed players to move before round had officially started. Fix the bug that allowed players to easily leave the boundaries of the arena. And fix the bug that caused lock on to behave differently um, when used on a gamepad. And for known issues. The new animation transitions have introduced instances where it's possible to dodge at times that not intended. We'll continue to prove this. Future patches. Um, next is lock on incorrectly uses keep in view mode when it should use track closely mode with certain character setups. Not to observe the reverse situation to occur. It's currently possible to become stuck in certain difficult to reach places in the cavern arena. Certain areas of Cavern Arena are currently accessible that are not intended to be. Would they, while a visualization is displayed when the kinfolk has its stats raised or lowered, there is no current visualization for how much it's been raised or lowered. Plan to add more visualizations in the future. When your party is revived, if they all die in the practice room, kinfolk in your first slot is not revived. Visual effects for crush do not sway properly. Uh, damage descriptions for several abilities do not have tick damage. Occasionally, players with low ping do not return to the current starting position between rounds. And... Uh, Occasionally attempting to cancel search results to the map maker locked up. Often times team cannot be edited while searching for a game and several abilities currently use placeholders, VFX, and sound effects or do not have sound effects yet at all. I'd be interested to know which abilities those are. Because I think most of the abilities look pretty good in my opinion right now. But anyways, that has been the patch. It's been a little bit of a long one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. This has been Monster Table Boba signing off. You have a wonderful day. Goodbye. God bless, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.